So yeah, let's talk about art. all the garbage. All let's the garbage? talk about arts. Arts. What about arts? Well, there's so many. There's so many arts, Daryl. No, there's like four. There's like four arts. There's, there's, four arts. there's the drawing arts. Yeah, the painting arts. The painting arts. The sculpting arts. That's also an art, yeah. And, and uh, love. And yeah, the love arts. The love art. The art that's all love. the arts. Yeah, that's all the arts. No, uh, <laughs> there's a lot. I think it's interesting, like, thinking about where to draw the line at what is and what is not art. I was actually thinking about this earlier today, ironically. Yeah. I think about it a lot. Just like... Is book art? Yeah, like, yeah. Are to, an, art? to an extent. Yeah, 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 for sure. And like, is splatter paint art? Yeah, yeah. There's tons of like debate on like art that challenges art. If that is art. Yeah. Like, uh, like even in postmodernism or contemporary art fields, it's like I don't want to make or like Duchamp. He made the ready mades. Mm -hmm. He had a what are those? Just toilets. He would put on a pedestal and sign them. Yep. And he'd be like, "That's art." And people were like, "Oh." I'm gonna completely butcher this story, but there's a some some foreign country where this dude he like I, I feel like he lived up in a castle somewhere, and all the shit he did, everybody like called it art, and he was like he he was so mad he would like continue to do stupid thing after stupid thing, and they they loved it, they loved yeah, everything yeah. he did. So eventually he just shit in a box, what? and the, and everybody was like, oh my god, it's amazing. So yeah. they so they took. Uh, they, they made a museum out of this dude's, like, castle or house or whatever. Like I said, I'm probably completely butchering this. And the centerpiece is this box with shit in it. Really? I swear. And, like, it's still the shit? I totally didn't fact check this at all. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I could see it. I mean, there comes a point when, like, if you have notoriety already, then, like, anything you make is golden. Like, it doesn't matter. You could, like, have, you could just do whatever, anything. Like, shit in a box and people will ascribe some sort of, like, oh, he's challenging the... Cards Against Humanity uh, sold sold actual shit in a box. I don't know if you, really? you did. I can't remember what they called the product. I think they called it actual horse shit or something like that. Oh, really? And then they sold it. And then they, like, in the description were, like, very clear, like, this is actually a dried, like, turd or cow turd or yeah. cow pie or whatever. People bought it, opened them up, and they're like, fuck. It's, right. actually, it's <laughs> actually shit. They, like, didn't expect it? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then there's all that art, too. I'm talking about, like, cards and stuff. Products and... Yeah, those products and design and, like, anything you buy mm -hmm. is, like... I mean, there's the whole, um... The graphic design aspect of, like, marketing towards specific genders or age groups and stuff like that and how the design of Diet Coke is marketed towards middle-aged women because it's silver, but the design of Coke Zero is black, so it's marketed towards men. Color like, theory and, yeah. and all that, like... McDonald's even like red and yellow yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be like it, it's supposed to get you in in a like quick and like I, I don't exactly know but like the mood is like eat fast and go like yeah, essentially yeah it's supposed to make you hungry but you don't want to stay around those such vibrant colors hey, right. so you sit down and you're like mm, like starting to feel uncomfortable like, I can eat this Big Mac in two bites <laughs> yeah exactly so you get up and leave and yeah. then you choke yeah exactly but um it's interesting where like, would you call that art? Would you call marketing design art? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I think to an extent, I think to an extent there's an art to it. And that's another thing I was thinking about. Like, uh, there's an art to something, but that doesn't necessarily make that thing art. art like, yeah. there's an art to running, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, but running itself is I, an, an it, art. Yeah, I, I, maybe it could be. Maybe, yeah, in the right circumstances. Yeah. That's the thing, though, is like... Uh, like, in what circumstance something is kind of, like, defines whether or not it's art. Like, you put something in a gallery, well, that's art. Mm. Like, whatever it is, it's art. And like, I recently went to a, a show in um, Cincinnati that I, like, disagreed 100% with, like, everything that was there. It was, like, an, like an anti-craft show. Huh. So what that means is just, like, they purposefully didn't refine or make their work, like, nice or, like, aesthetically pleasing necessarily. They, like, left it all raggedy and, like, Was it, like, half done. sketches, drawings, or, like, physical... There were some, some sketches, some drawings, but it was a lot of sculpture. Okay. And it was, like... For instance, there was, like... Imagine an oval cut out of steel, right? And then another oval, but it was welded... To the to other the one. middle of the oval. And then, like... But it didn't sit... And it was sitting on the floor. And it didn't sit flat, obviously, because it's just two circular shapes right. welded to each other. Um, and then there was, like, a lemon drop or something... 
like stuck to one of the metal pieces. Like the candy? Yeah, or some sort of candy. <laughs> it was like a yellow, like sticky thing. We got up close to it. It was like had hair and shit on it. Yeah. And it, it was just stuck on there. And uh, that was art. That yeah. was a whole piece. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, no, this is bullshit. Like, this is literally bullshit. How did this... What curator was like, yes. Let me dust off... Oh, no, wait. Don't take those hairs off. Those are supposed to be there. Yeah, exactly. Specifically just like that. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's just like... And my professor tried to argue for it. And I'm not sure that he actually enjoyed the work itself, but he was just trying to play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you have to assume... In a gallery setting, that everything you see, the artist was intentionally did it. He did it for a reason. It wasn't like, oh man, I dropped this lemon drop on the ground and I'm just <laughs> going to stick it here. Like, there's a reason you did that and you got to think about that and ask yourself why conceptually. And like, it was by this like picture of, uh, actually a really nice photograph of um, like just like a desert area with like chairs, steel chairs in it. Huh. And it was called like Thirst or something like that. And he was like, you know, looking at that picture it's right in front of. Uh, like that makes me thirsty, and I think of like thirsty, and he started being like, "It's like that kind of makes me want like a like a candy or like something to suck like on." Like a lemon drop. And he's like, <laughs> "Like this lemon drop here." Oh, so clever. Yeah, and he's like, "I was like, you're really fucking pulling at straws here, buddy." Yeah. Like, so I I I really don't have any problem calling anything art, like to the extent that like yeah, I I don't care if you call like two balls welded together with a lemon drop on them art. But I think a lot of people have trouble, like, they assume that the word art automatically means, like, it's the same level as, like, other art. So, like, you yeah. look at, like, the thinker, the statue, like, the yeah. statue of David, Mona Lisa, like, amazing art pieces that we have in history, and we're like, art! Mm -hmm. One word, art. And then you're like, lemon drop on two metal balls, art! And it's, like, conflict. Yeah, exactly. So I don't have any trouble calling, like, both of those things art. Calling a thing art is almost like calling a thing a thing to me. It's like there's different mm -hmm. there's different levels of skill and like ability and all that, that that ties into all that. Yeah, definitely. I it just makes me mad as an artist when there's bad art that yeah. like, gets recognition <laughs> and you're just like, eh, eh. like you know, because you, you hone your skill, like you sculpt every day all the time, and I do the same thing. And the attempt to get better, to like always challenge myself and like do better than the last time and I always want to see, like and in all in all aspects not just craft but like concept how I'm getting it across to people stuff like that mm -hmm. um, and when someone just shits something out and like rolls it around a bit and it's like <laughs> there you go like that's fuck you man like I worked like this is three months of my life that took you 45 seconds yeah I, you don't get to no that's not the same yeah I think we both kind of have the same like line in the sand when it comes to us Art, like our personal definition of art or like good art versus like actual like actual garbage that you yeah. put on the ground yeah so I think that line is is like time spent and skill and like the amount of those two things that are applied to whatever it is that you're doing I mean you could be like fucking playing in the mud and making shit and I don't care like if you took a week to sculpt a beautiful like sand castle I've seen some like awesome yeah. sand art yeah like and, and I even said amazing. it like without even thinking like sand art like it, it, because it's amazing and it's yeah. like something that's not gonna last and yeah it's uh yeah there's like definitely a skill and a craft and time spent that goes into all that yeah and that that brings up the question of like especially when looking at traditional and fine art um a lot of that is materials and like what materials are you using and then like there's like prestigious materials even within art fields even within specific art realms there's like uh, these these materials are good and these aren't as good. Like with uh, clay, I'm a ceramicist. Porcelain is like the high and mighty clay. Like right. perfect, beautiful, pristine white porcelain. Just like everybody's like, oh, like just drooling over porcelain. Is, but then like, is porcelain expensive? Like it, I, it is I'm a not a expensive. traditional sculptor, so. Yeah, it's, it's a little more expensive. I mean like compared to some other clays. But then like, yeah, I don't know, like a low fire brown clay might just be like meh like eh, not as not as sought after like maybe the same sculpture one made in porcelain and one made in some other shittier clay um you know maybe the one in porcelain would get more recognition than the one in stoneware or something like that gotcha and even that like uh i can say porcelain you know what i'm talking about but if I say stoneware or like raccoon clay or I have no fucking yeah, clue what raccoon no clay is. Uh, raccoon R A K U or K K U. But like 
Um, it's like stoneware. Everybody uses stoneware. Huh. But, like, nobody knows stone. I probably wouldn't recognize it. Yeah, and, but, like, it's, it's just a normal mass-produced clay. Like, most things are made out of some type of stoneware, like uh, huh. like your cups or your bowls, like mass-produced ones. You know, they're not porcelain, usually. Um, they're just I some do have clay. some bowls and plates that are probably stoneware. And yeah. I do think I remember the box saying stoneware yeah, on Yeah, there's a stoneware company that yeah. makes stoneware-produced, like, mass-produced um, commercial plates and bowls and stuff. Still, everybody's like, oh, I don't know what that is. Yeah. But everybody knows porcelain. Of course. It's beautiful. Yeah, I, I can't really, like, the only connection I can make to the, the digital world for that, since I'm a digital artist, is, like, different different softwares being used. And I think a lot of people, the only real connection that I can make is, like, a lot of people that aren't digital artists come in and they say, oh, well, that's the easy button. That's the That software that you're using is the quick way to do it. So there's a software called Marvelous Designer, which you can use to essentially sew fabric and then simulate cloth. Huh. And uh, it's a really cool tool, and a lot of people use it. But uh, some people kind of look down on and say, "Well, you didn't, you didn't make it the traditional way. You didn't like take the time to actually 3D model or or digitally sculpt that that piece of clothing." So. If you would have done it the traditional way, it would have taken you a lot longer, been a lot harder, and you probably yeah. w- it w- wouldn't have even looked as good. You just simulated it, and it's like, well, I, personally, I don't use Marvelous Designer because I don't own it. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. expensive. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That's 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 in, that's really awesome because like the same thing happens in the traditional arts, and I, I'm actually surprised it happens so quickly with like um, with digital mediums because like for instance, I sculpt a lot and I hand sculpt all my stuff. But people use molds. People have always used molds forever. Yeah. I've always used molds. You, you should, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, that's the thing. It's like, should you use a mold? Because, like, if you're a sculptor and you're using a mold, you're just cheating. You're mm. just, well, some people think this. In a way. In a way, you're just taking a shortcut, you know? Oh, well, like, I want to sculpt a head? Just stick your fucking head in some uh, plaster or whatever. Don't stick your head in plaster. <laughs> You'll burn your face off. But, like... <laughs> um, Good nap. Yeah, but, like... You know, some people, you know, there is a way to use plaster to capture the face. But then you have a mold of the face, and you're just like, oh, now I could just push clay in there, and, and then I have my face perfectly replicated. Huh. No sculpting time. No real skill. I just stuck thi- something on a thing, took it off that thing, put more stuff on that new thing I had. Right. And now I have a product, which looks beautiful and perfect, but, like, it took a day. As opposed to someone, like me, I hand sculpt everything just because I want to be a good sculptor. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I, I feel exactly the same way. So my my theory is, and I actually get asked this question a lot by people that are like starting out in ZBrush, um, is it like okay to use a, a base mesh? So like a base mesh in 3D modeling would be like the basic uh, proportions and sizings of like a human character, and then I take that as like my mold piece, mm-hmm. and then build off of that and make changes to proportions or muscles or or whatever. Is it okay to do that? And my answer is always, well, like, what's your intention uh, as an artist? Um, so for me, like, my intention a lot of the time is to uh, practice those early beginning things like proportions and and all that kind of stuff in basic forms to get better and get faster at that. But if your intention is to create a production-ready character or whatever as quickly as possible, then then totally, like, cheat in every way that you yeah, can. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> there's the practicality sense and then, like, the skill sense. So, like, do you want to be practical and be like, well, you know, I don't want to spend four months on this. Right. Um, or do you want to have the skill to do it yourself? And I think it's just, like, look, as an artist, an artist should always know how to... Um, do everything like the whole the whole process especially when it comes to like <clears throat> sculpting like what you were saying proportions and whatnot let's say that artist were to be get like a teaching gig that just always used a base mesh mm-hmm. and then he's trying to teach somebody how to sculpt the human form he'd probably be pretty correct cra- like, yeah yeah he'd be like well i don't know you'd use the base mesh but like you know like you know what i mean like it's not like well you take the different uh, distance between the brow and the chin and then bring it back and next to the eye line and that's the right. width of your head and all that stuff like so like all those little things you pick up on all those little proportion things and oh like the front of your skull actually goes out a little bit and then it goes back in and like all that stuff and the back of your head isn't flat it's curved but like this hair makes it look flat but like all of those things and, like, but from for me like repeating all these processes over and over and over again which is like why I do them is allows me to learn 
uh, a lot of anatomy stuff, a lot of techniques for actual sculpting inside of inside of ZBrush, which is the program I use, and just like all that stuff to be able to practice that as often as I can. But like little techniques like mm. that, like, oh, why does the ear get placed here? Well, it gets placed behind the ear because that's where your uh, auditory canal is or your auditory meatus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like the people that are practical, if you don't know these things, then like how much of an artist are you really? Because like I think all art is being able to make things and if you want to make them like let's say correct anatomically correct then like your skill as an artist is just based off of like or like your um the, how good of an artist you can call yourself is just based off of the skill you know and the skill you have to like know everything effectively and do everything on your own i mean i think artists are just like problem solvers and people that create and if you need someone else to have make a base model or something like that for you then like well, then how much of that is really yours and how much is that really the person who started you out because they took, you know, half the workout for you. Like, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think you should be able to call everything your own. Like, I did this. And that's just me. I mean, I know plenty of really successful artists out there works amazing, and they use molds. Yeah. But they also know how to sculpt the human form, like, perfectly. But now that they know that, they're like, well, why the fuck would I? Yeah, it's, like, I it's <laughs> typically the people, the people that you see that are like, holy shit, they're so amazing, the, these are the people that I follow. Those people are typically the people that started out doing everything on their own, and then eventually they do get to a point where they feel like, okay, I've created like maybe my own molds, or I've created yeah. my own base meshes, and now I repurpose my own stuff. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of what I've been doing for the past couple of years, like building up a library of assets for myself to be able to use. Yeah, and that makes sense. Like, and I was, uh, like making your own like molds or base meshes things like that that all makes sense to me like that makes sense if you're if you've mastered it then and you have the capability to start from a certain point then what what's the point you don't have to prove anything anymore you're not really going to learn as nearly as much as you did in the beginning i guess the, the purpose is to learn and then once you know it well then you can like oh i'll start from here because i can do i did make this right and like what's the point of me remaking it if i already have it <laughs> yeah. available to me yeah but like Starting like, I have no idea how to sculpt at all. I mean, like, well, I'm going to use this base mesh. Like, well, like, I... Yeah. Like, if you really want to learn, you should really learn. It's just, and like, it's all about your intention, like you said. Like, if you just want to make mass production stuff, yeah, go ahead, use it. So, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is true for traditional sculpting and for people that are kind of new to it, but uh, do, you, do you get to talk to, like, a lot of new sculptors that are coming into to university like with you do you see like a lot of new people there sometimes i mean i don't uh interact with a lot of them not because i like, think i'm better or anything <laughs> new yeah it's the <laughs> fucking green <laughs> no uh i just uh i'm in a different room because i have my own studio room you don't now. have like an opportunity to yeah and i just yeah i take a lot of time to work on my shit so sometimes i'll run into them like oh you're doing a good job or oh yeah like keep it up um i do try to like steal people okay like, to this ceramics department <laughs> I am kind of like, I know I pick out the good ones. Gotcha. You, know, you can just see and you're like, yeah, yeah you're doing a really good job. Maybe you should uh, take ceramic sculpture next semester. And like, it's a cool class. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, try to go for your BFA, you know, maybe. Uh, but So, yeah, but the reason I asked that was because my question of, do you see a lot of new people, like, trying to bite off a lot more than they can chew? Like, when they're they're like okay, welcome to, like, your first time doing some sculpture here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to make a 10-foot 10, 10 diameter vase. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, normally the professor stops that right off the bat. And, you know, to be a professor, I think your job is to push students as far as they can go without becoming extremely frustrated. Because, okay. like, you do want students to push themselves and, like, bite off a little bit more than they can chew because they're a student and they're not a professional artist yet. They're not going to turn around and try and sell this. So, like, the whole point of making the thing is to learn as much as possible. So, like, sure, go as far as you can within reason. Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, if someone tries to sculpt a whole figure... Yeah, that's that was essentially going to be my question. Yeah, it's it, like, yeah, you're, so, you're, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. And, yeah. and the professor would probably be like, no. Like, maybe a head, maybe an arm. Yeah, like, so that yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what I do a lot of the time. A lot of people are like, oh, I want to make my first character of whatever. And I'm like, well, <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe step it back. Maybe try 
for your very first project, since it's your very first and you did use those exact words, yeah. maybe try like a finger yeah, exactly. or a hand. Like let's let's slow it down a little here. Yeah. But Especially with the human form, it's so incredibly complex. It's because we have such an eye for it. It's so easy for us to tell when things are just off a little, especially yeah. in the face. Face is, face is really tough yeah, if you're definitely. trying to do anatomically correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wouldn't say I'm a master of faces by any means, but I have been doing figurative work for like about a year and a half now, about a year. And like I'm still not good at it. Right. I just, I, I'm still not, not great. Me neither. A lot of my work <laughs> is purpose. Now, my work right now is purposefully skewed, so like... My work right now is a little bit off on purpose to sort of make the viewer feel um, like something's wrong. Because I, I, I want the viewer to be on edge. I want the viewer to feel uncomfortable with the forms that I'm creating. The, the faces that you're creating right now kind of remind me of... I, I don't remember the name of the painting, but it's like the screaming man, and he's got like his hands on his cheek. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it almost reminds me of that, but... Yeah, I think it's called The Scream, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's actually painted on cardboard, interestingly enough. It's on cardboard? Well, it's on masonite. Which is essentially cardboard. Yeah, cardboard. Yeah. Very nice cardboard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> masonite. Um, that sounds like a really cool material, though, masonite. It's not. It's, it's not. like <laughs> thin, cheap shit. I, people use it to paint on, like, huh. uh, for, like, cheap canvas. I think if you actually paint on cardboard, it would, like, melt, depending on what yeah, type Yeah, it would be, like, <laughs> all flippy-floppy. Like, yeah, so a lot of, I, I purposefully manipulate my faces so that you feel weird about them. Mm. But if I were to try to sculpt a face perfectly... I don't, I don't think I'd be able to get, like, very, very close. I think you could. I think it would just... I, th I think all art is attainable, but it's just, like, the amount of time it would take you to, mm -hmm. like, reach that point extends beyond the amount of time you would, like, want to put in that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. That's the thing. It's, like, it's just how hard do you work, how right. much time you put in. Um, I'm in wheel throwing right now, and I'm in wheel throwing three. So everybody comes and, like, looks at my work, and they're like, that's fucking... <laughs> <laughs> wheel throwing one. Their head one. actually explodes. Yeah. <laughs> just wheel, th wheel one students. Got like, another one, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bonner, I need you to clean up. <laughs> no, uh, but they'll come to me and be like, how'd you get so good? Like, literally, one person asked me, how did you get so good? I'm in wheel throwing 300 yeah. level course. Yeah, exactly. I was like, uh, time. This is my third time I took this course, like, and all of that, but I spend like 10 hours outside of class throwing, and I have done that every single semester just so a year and a half now so like yeah a lot of new artists have trouble really like understanding that gap and and like making that connection yeah and my professor was just talking the other day about how um how art is work he's like it's it's work it's not fun and entertainment he's like it can be fun it can be entertaining to make art but if you're doing it in a serious practice, it's if a you're job. a serious artist, yeah, he's like, it's work. It's it's a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time. The yeah. learning curve is just substantially larger than other um, fields, just because like you're trying to replicate things, and it's, there's no book to go by. It's just like you have to learn how to see, and learning how to see is like a very hard thing. It's yeah, it's building that visual library is probably the most difficult part of of art, it's actually understanding how things work in a way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have to know physics, you have to know, like, how things move accordingly, and, like, what you're trying to sculpt, too. Like, obviously, if you're trying to sculpt a, a wall, well, that's going to be real easy, mm -hmm. but, like, if you're trying to do anything semi-complex, like, even an ant, like, that, if you want to sculpt a good ant, it's going to be fucking difficult. So there's actually <laughs> an art school, I heard this story years ago, and, again, I'll butcher it, but it doesn't matter. So there's an art school, and... They would have everybody come in for for an art test, and the guy at the front of the room would just say, uh, you have X number of minutes to draw an ant. And then everybody would, like, try to draw an ant real quick. Yeah. And people would do, like, three dots and, like, uh, eight lines, like, legs and yeah. antenna, and that would be good enough uh, because it was, like, a quick amount of time. But a lot of people would, like, put the legs on... Uh, like the lower segment of the the ant instead of all being on the abdomen or thorax wow. or whatever the yeah. the middle section of an ant is correctly called uh, so like you'd have like w one pair of legs coming out of the neck and like one in the middle and like one in the it's like no that's not how an ant works yeah like, exactly yeah it's just like a test of like where are you in your kind of understanding of even like something like an ant yeah and and even that like a cha a good challenge would be like okay draw an ant let's just say draw an ant, and, like, fairly large, large, larger than life, because otherwise we won't be able to get any detail on But, like, just from memory. 
Yeah. Just from what you remember about ants. I guarantee you'll fuck it up like horribly. Because <laughs> yeah. like th- that's the insane thing is like you've you've looked Hun- at things your Honey, whole life. Honey, I shrunk the kids has completely skewed my memory. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's just like you look at things all day long and you're like you're like, oh I know what an ant is, I know what a dog is, yeah. I know what a cat is. Yeah. But until you try to fucking like make that thing, like mm-hmm. replicate that, you're like then you start to realize like, oh, I have never actually looked at anything. But like, once once I make a thing, I have like such even or even attempt to make a thing, I have such a better understanding of oh, yeah. of that. It's it's actually kind of weird. So I don't know if you saw my calendar out there when you came in, but it's a stupid little calendar of it's just like a magnet calendar on my fridge where you know how like everybody does like a check mark on the day or an X. I'll do like a little like ten second doodle every day in like the square, and it's yeah. typically something fucking retarded. But I had just sculpted uh, Goofy from Disney mm-hmm. like that day and I was like oh I'll draw Goofy and I'm like fuck I could never like understand how to draw this character like this Mm -hmm. if even though it was like 10-15 seconds I just did it really quick and it's like oh "Oh, I would have never like known how he actually looked if I didn't sculpt him today yeah Yeah, it's crazy Um, the same thing can be applied with anything like my professor she's just insanely good at doing figure sculpture like fucking insane like you look at it it's just like (laughs) <laughs> and she does it really fast. Like, for instance, my friend went over to her, and she, she was just sculpting a face. Just like a, just a face, no, like, head or anything. Um, mm. And she was like, oh, could you help me with this? And she took, the professor took it, and she's like, oh, well, yeah, but, like, your eyes are wrong, and then, like, you need to widen the nose, and down here on the nostrils, you need to push that up. And see how the cheeks, like, they kind of curve in, but then they, like, go down, and then you have, you have more muscular systems here. She's, like, drawing out the muscular systems. She's mm-hmm. like, so you want to add more clay there. And, like, right at underneath the lips, you want to add more skin because there's muscle there. But, like, it'll look weird if you don't. Yeah, it'll look you got to get that upside down you of yeah. the, the bottom lip. <laughs> exactly. And she's, yeah, she's like, the lips, like, they, they go out and up, but they, like, also go in. The upper lip goes in. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's not, like, how you would expect. It, like, you know, it goes in and then out a bit and then curves up to meet the skin of the top lip and like all these things she's like the eyes you know she's like you need to push them back further because they actually recede further into the skull like all this stuff and then like 10 minutes she was saying all this like extremely fast and she was just like tearing apart this ah! sculpture and then re-putting it back together and it was beautiful by the end of it in like 10 minutes she's like and there you go there's a perfect face for you like just almost perfect like it was just insane how good she is and she spent 10 minutes doing it but like She's from South Korea, and to get into undergrad, she had to be able to sculpt a bust, like a Greek-Roman bust, in, like, four hours. Wow. And she had to be able to draw, a, a, like, a full portrait, like a self, full self-portrait, in two hours. Just to, like, that was her, like, assessment. For undergrad. Just to get into school. Just to get in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, that's nothing like here. Like, here we let in anybody. Yeah. Just, just come in. Any any idiot with money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like, so she, um, that woman, my friend asked uh, the professor, how long did it take you to get the form? Like an, an undergrad, graduate? And she's like, oh no, high school. Like every day after my class, I would sculpt. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I would sculpt for four hours. Tuesday, Thursday, so, was it? yeah, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I would draw for four hours every mm-hmm. single day. For, for years, I did that until, like, and then she got the form in, in high school. But, like, people nowadays, like, we don't really impress upon young artists to be, like, if you want to do this, you have to take it seriously. So, yeah. so they're so far behind in undergrad that it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, people, people often confuse, like, actual age of the human being with the age of their, like, art level almost in a way. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I honestly haven't been like interested or participating in like art for very long like all of four years people who are my age that have been doing art their whole life i'm like fuck (laughs) yeah dude yeah and even like there's big gaps there's big gaps even with people who work really hard and then people who are like naturally talented and of course like those people that are naturally talented and are way better than like people that are in that same group age group They've worked just as hard as, like, the next person. Right. If not harder. But, like, they are still leagues up in front of... Like, there's this person who's a painting major, and she's like, sculpted this animal the other day, and it was gorgeous. It was, like, her second sculpture class. But she does a lot of, like, painting and drawing. She does a lot so of painting So she drawing. has, like, that... 
a lot of that stuff is transferable in yeah. terms of like visual understanding. Definitely, I would agree. But like, it was still like I've been using this medium for years now, and I I could I could probably replicate what she made, but like not as quick as she did it, or well, I mean, I probably as quick, but just like she's had far less time oh, okay. with gotcha. clay than I have, so like. I definitely don't think she made anything, like, better than I could make right now. So you killed her. Yes, I killed her. <laughs> but I definitely think she made something, like, if I was in her position, like, my second ceramic class, and I tried to compete with her where she is now, like, mm -hmm. no fucking way. Like, if she had the same amount of time sculpting as you. Yeah. But who knows? She she, she probably has been drawing and painting since, oh, she, yeah. since she could hold a pencil. Yeah, definitely. But, I mean, it's just, like, interesting to see that natural talent and how some people fall, go ahead and some people fall behind and like how hard willing people are willing to work um, and just how much time people are willing to invest. Right. Because there's some people graduating right now that, you know, like it's not necessarily the the most refined work or like the best work or mm -hmm. not, nothing I would want to put my name on. But at the same time, I look at my work and I'm like, I don't really want to put my name on that either. Like, yeah. so like, it's just a hard, difficult, being an artist is difficult in the sense that like, if you are like, my work's great, then you're never going to move further. But if you're always like, my work sucks, then like, yeah, you'll get ahead because you're going to be pushing yourself harder. But like, you'll never be satisfied. You'll always be like, damn. It that's, sucks. that's a problem with most artists yeah. is that they are never satisfied. Yeah, I'm not. Like, ever. I've been satisfied like once or twice with the piece. But then the next week you look back out on it and you're like, well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I've been satisfied at the time with a few pieces. But the ones that have held the test of time has been, like, one or two pieces. I, I can look at it and be like... Yeah, there's, there's like, work. probably one or two things I could look back on and be like, I'm proud of what I accomplished at that time, but if I did it again, I could do it a lot better. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to talk about uh, what you were saying about natural talent, because I have, like, really strong and firm beliefs on the idea of, like, natural talent, and that's the idea that it, like, doesn't fucking exist. Really? So I believe that there are what are essentially two encampments of, of like, talent, we'll call it. There's the idea of uh, what I'll call the, the minor talent, which is you have, like, a natural inclination to that thing, whether that's from, like, desire or your parents were artists or, or whatever it is that, like, over your childhood and multiple years, teenage years, 20s, 30s, whatever, wherever you are now, that stuff has, like, led you to have that, that natural uh, kind of, a, like, a efficiency adaption, whatever you want to call it, talent uh, towards that thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other encampment, which I consider to be, like, the major talent or, the, like, the major idea is, uh, is your personal, like, love and desire of that thing. And there's, like, this example of... Like, two girls, I, I forget where I read about this, but it's, like, two girls playing soccer in high school. And it's, like, Shelly is just naturally more fit and stronger than this, than sh fucking, I can't think of another Cynthia. woman's name. <laughs> Cynthia. <Yeah. laughs> what is this? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Michael, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Michael. Her name is Michael. Yeah. We don't judge here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Shelly's, like, way just fucking better than Michael. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Michael's like, oh, well, that sucks. But Michael fucking loves soccer. So Michael works, like, ten times harder than Shelly. And by the end of that year, Shelly's still, like, really good at soccer. But Michael, who has loved soccer and worked, like, ten times harder than Shelly, even though she was, like, already really good at it and still practiced at it just as much as everybody else, like, Michael has now, like, surpassed Shelly. I can see that for sure. I think the time dedication is very important. For instance... Uh, this is an example in high school. There was this girl in my class in high school um, who, like, struggled with chemistry, right? And I had no problem with chemistry. So, like, I didn't study, didn't, like, give a shit. Like, you know, I just went in... Because high school's a fucking joke, if we're being honest. Um, so, like, it was really... It was easy. And I don't mean to, like, shit on anybody that's like, I'm in high school chemistry and my life sucks. But, like... If you're in high school, your life sucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, like, it, it wasn't that hard, but she had a difficult time with it. And um, she studied way more than I did. She, like, in the beginning of the class, she got really bad grades, and I got, like, A's or B's. Mm -hmm. I was like, eh, you know, whatever. As the class continued and got more difficult over time, that, like, it went above my natural inclination for the subject, um, and I continued to not study, and I continued, and I got, like, you know, B's, B pluses, B minuses, maybe, like, a few C's, 
nothing like failing, but not nearly as good as an A, um, as what I started out with. And this girl that was in my class, she studied, like, dedicated large amounts of her time to it, like, did extra work all the time, did her homework all the time, like, all this shit, and she ended up getting an A in the class, and I got, like, a B, like, a B minus. Yeah. And, like, in the beginning of the class, if you were to look at the grades, you'd be like, oh, shit, like, this dude's gonna totally, like, this girl's gonna fail, and this dude's gonna pass. And it ended up being, like, this girl got an A, and he got, like, a whole letter grade lower than her. Yeah. So, like, a whole ten points. So that's, like... It's, I could see your point, but I also do think, like, if you have that natural talent, but you also have that love. That's, yeah, that's the ultimate, is, like, where you have both. Yeah. You, like, have the, like, for some reason, like, you have that natural inclination, plus you fucking love that thing. Yeah. That's, like, the the one that you want. You want both of those. Yeah. But I do think that anybody who has, like, the love of that thing will always, in the end, as long as, like, if you don't give up, because there's always that situation of, like, your person in chemistry, or this girl, like, gave up, like, oh, halfway yeah. through the semester because she's like, it's too hard, which is, like, how people fail. But I always yeah. I always feel like that bigger talent of love and, like, passion will always surpass, like, any natural inclination without that, that passion. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Yeah, if you take... And it's just a matter of time when you'll surpass them. Um, it could be years. It could be a few weeks, depending on, like, the, the skill gap. But... The giving up thing, I want to go back to that. That's an easy thing to, like, want to do. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm about to graduate with my BFA, and, like, I do, I really want to continue. But I have had doubts. Like, I've had plenty of doubts. I've talked to my professors. Like, I literally was like, did I make a mistake uh -huh. in this? Because I don't feel like I'm good enough, and I don't feel that, like, my work, makes me fulfilled on like my, my I'm not successful in my personal sense where I want to be fulfilled for my work and like I want to look at it and be like yeah and I'm also not fulfilled I don't know if I'll be fulfilled in like the practical sense of success where like where I'll be able to support myself and shit like that um so it's like what do I do yeah like, it's, all, it's the huge like scary looming question of can you do it yeah yeah is it possible and and my professor was like listen like, you, he's like, you, you can, I can tell you can do it. He's like, it's just time. You just gotta, you gotta get your MFA. You're young, yeah. like, you have so much time. Yeah. Like, you're, you're so young. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's easy to be like, oh, I spent five, not me, spent five years on this degree. Yeah. Like, fuck. Like, I thought I'd be good by now. But then, like... You get to that, I, yeah, I, I get to the same point so often. Yeah, but even my professor Stephen was like, listen, you're not gonna... And this was just, he told the classes. He was like, we don't expect you to live here like artists. We just expect you to be on your way to becoming artists, to have a good, firm understanding of the basics. Foundation. And he's like, but I've been doing this for 45 years. So, like, there's no way that you could be at my level at the end of undergraduate. It's just not possible. I have an MFA, I have a BFA. I, like, have been teaching. I have been an active artist for four and a half decades. Don't compare yourself to me. Compare yourself to other students. Compare yourself to yourself. Have you improved? Like, look at what your stuff from the first semester and your last semester. Right. What's the difference? And then, like, see that difference? Well, then, that'll be the difference in another four years. That's the thing like, that actually always keeps me kind of pushing forward when I feel like, oh, like, oh, should I go get a, quote, real job? Yeah, exactly. Like, or, right. or, or whatever. But uh, you always look at the gap in front of you, but, like, turning around and looking at the back... Uh, the, the gap behind you and, like, looking through your backlog of work. Like, look at something that you did a year ago or look at a lot of stuff that you did a year ago and pick out all the shitty ones because it's going to make you feel a lot better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And then be like, well, I could do that in 20 minutes now. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, it's easy to give up. It's easy to, it's easy, especially easy to fall into, like, a more traditional, like, nine to five, work your shift, go home, that's it. Because I feel like a lot of being an artist is you are your artwork, and you are how how well or how badly you do with that artwork, in my opinion. Like, I tie myself to my pieces, not intentionally, but just, like, you put a lot of work in there, and that's yeah, your absolutely. thing. It's not like, oh, I made a mistake on a computer, like, whoops, or like, oh, I, I misdid this thing, the shipping sheet, and now the order's off. But that's fine, because that's not who I am. I'm not a ship, like a shipping sheet. Yeah. But, like, I am my, like, this is my soul. You're looking at, this like, This is my, the past three months of my life. Yeah. Put into physical form Ex before you. Exactly. And it's just, like, 
if that doesn't do well, then you're just like, oh, what am I? Yeah. <laughs> like, what what did I do? Yeah, like, there's there's an idea in, at least in the digital art community that I know, that's called Nuke It Into Orbit, which is... <laughs> <laughs> uh, nuke It Into Orbit. Yeah. I like it. I, uh, I actually interviewed someone else a while ago, and the audio ended up getting lost. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was, it was terrible, but this is something he was telling me. This is his personal phrase, Nuke It Into Orbit. But uh, n Killing Your Babies is another one that a lot of people use. But <laughs> killing your babies. Yeah. It sounds yeah. terrible. Right? So the idea is you have your art piece and then just to completely cut the cord, like disconnect yourself from it. Mm -hmm. uh, add none of your like own value into that thing. Just like throw it up there and let people shit on it. Mm -hmm. Which is so hard. It's it's it actually is really hard. A lot of people are like, Oh yeah, I can take critique, but like critique is tough. It's it's good for you, and you need it. You need it, yeah. But you need people that are good at giving critique as well. Definitely. There's absolutely such thing as, like, shit critique. Oh, yeah, and, you, and your job as an artist is just be able to know. Like, if you sculpt in the ear and it's perfect and someone comes along and they're like, well, I don't know, it's a little, like, mm, like maybe there's the so many. There's so much variation yeah. in ears, like... You could you could do anything with an ear and it would look like someone's fucking ear. Yeah, exactly. On Earth. Yeah, but like if like the folds are wrong, you'd be like, no, like fuck off. But like, there, you know, that's what I value out of like uh, college, just art school, is learning how to critique work and learning how to see, learning how to think like an artist, is far more important than like your capability to make the art in school, in my opinion, because making the art will come with time. But if you aren't shown how to see or how to think or how to, like, read art, then, like, you may never gain that skill um, unless you, like, personally look toward to get that skill. But, like, most people don't. Most people focus on the work hmm. as opposed to, like, the theory or, like, how to see. You're like, oh, what's the conceptual stuff and how to think about art in a smart way um, like an artist would. Um, and that's really important in school and, like, also being able to see correctly and, like, critique stuff. But I mean, like, I've had some really hard critiques from professors. And, like, that's, that's all we do is, like, we make, in our school, you make stuff, and then the whole class critiques it, including your professor. And most of the time, it's like, I think you did this nice and that bad, and next time work on this, or maybe you didn't push this idea far enough, stuff like that. But I've also had, like, a professor literally say, like, that reminds me of baby shit. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Um, and to put it in context, because that sounds it, way worse. <laughs> that reminds me of is my favorite, j just kidding, parentheses, quote, least favorite thing that anybody ever says about any artwork ever. Yeah. That reminds me of blank. Yeah, yeah. Well, in this case, it was even worse. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> shit. Baby shit. It was a stain that I put on a piece of wood. Mm. It was like a, a cherry stain. It looked fine, in my opinion. But uh, he said it kind of like, he hates stains on wood. So he has a personal preference already. Yeah. He's a... He had been a professional carpenter for years. Um, he has worked with wood in his own sculptures, so like he's very. Inclined. He knows what he likes. Yeah, he knows wood very, very well, and he knows that he doesn't like stains. He likes natural wood and like maybe a clear lacquer. Uh, okay. He's like, if you want it to look like rosewood, use fucking rosewood. Gotcha. Don't put a rosewood stain on it. <laughs> so like, um, it was that sort of thing. And but he he's just, like. Oh, the one percentile of people that would, could probably pick out Rosewood. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it was just like, I can't afford that. This is, I'm a sophomore in college. I can't, like, I'm not yeah. going to spend that much money on something that I'm probably not going to keep. But he made a good point. Like, don't try to emulate something if, if there's that thing. Like, yeah. Don't try to emulate uh, cherry wood if there's cherry wood. Like, what is, that's so dumb. Mm -hmm. Just like, and I, I got his point. But, like, he said it in a very harsh way. Yeah. And, like... Yeah, it's definitely easy to, like, get that that one or a few critiques from someone that uh, maybe has, like, a very personal opinion or just isn't very good at giving critiques, whether it's, like, you know, the, the, the good, the good bad, good critique sandwich or whatever the hell you're doing to give someone a critique. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think I learned that from working in production, just, like, being in a scenario where... I spend some time working on a thing, and then I hand it off to somebody else to say, like, what do you think about this? Like, should we move forward on on this piece? And I just kind of, like, get backhanded, like... Really? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Has like, that happened in, like, the production work? I've, I've definitely had scenarios in production work where I worked on something for, like, an entire day or a week or whatever the hell it is, and then I'm like, okay, now 
no, not yet. Back to work. Like, okay, work on it for another day. How about now? It's like, no, still not there yet. Like, mm-hmm. okay, another day. It's like, okay, what do you think now? It's like this constant back and forth of like, and there's obviously like a lot of discussion in, in these back and forths. Like, okay, let's, let's make these changes. We need to, whether it's like, because it's production work, if it's like making something more clean, if it's a toy that I'm working on or, or whatever it is, but it's like yeah. that back and forth of just like having that. Eventually I got to a point where I was just like, I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this is no longer about me and my ability. It's just about getting it to the best possible point that it can be. Yeah, yeah. And the amount of time that they want to spend on it. Right. And the amount time. of money they want to put into it. Yeah. Like, okay, well, it's good, but... Yeah, it's being on a on a production art job is a, a good way to kind of learn those skills. Yeah, definitely, and and that's that's also a good way, like because I'm sure that they're not gonna fucking lie to you. Like they're not gonna be like, no, Whoa. no punches are pulled at yeah, all. Because they're gonna be like, <laughs> we're paying you money, and like we need this product done. You need to fix that. Like this bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's, you know, that sucks. But like, it what you are doing in a way is like is a job, even if like you're not in production. Um, place and I mean that I of course it's always a job but like it's a job in the sense of like there are standards that need to be met you need to meet those standards which is why I recommend that you think of your artwork even if you're not selling your art or doing anything product for production or you're not making any money from it I always suggest that you think of your art or what you're doing as like a job maybe not like a nine to five job but like Mm -hmm. think of it like you're delivering a pro like maybe not a product but Try to put it in a sense to where you can kind of have that idea that it's like, oh, this is my nine to five job almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and especially if you want to pursue it seriously. Like if it's a hobby, you know, enjoy it as much as you want. Um, it doesn't matter. But like, because that's for your own personal. But if you want to get somewhere with it, it's work. It's just, it's just, it's just how it is. Like it's just like, man, I really got to learn how to make that thing right. I really got to learn how to translate this or that, or like, I really need to step up my conceptual game and stuff like that um which doesn't i'm sure it has some ref like hold in um digital work but like traditional work and like galleries and stuff like that where a lot of stuff is concept and whatnot um like you got to step all those things you have to like read you have to fucking like do it dude look how many like obviously anybody listening can't see how many fucking books I have, like, just right here. I have so many more, like, in my closet of just, like, different art books, like, sculpting, whether it's, like, a color and light book. I'm a digital sculptor. Like, mm-hmm. this is a painting book. But it's, no, like, you need I'm it. super interested in it, and it's just, like, learning about all these different art mediums and, and just reading about some of that stuff is kind of a passion of mine. But, like, all that stuff compiles and adds up. Yeah. And there's, like, so many of these little parts that people kind of kind of forget about. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, light, that's how everything works. That's how you see everything. So if you, if you want to represent things, especially realistically, you have to know how light works. And color. So it's the fundamental of drawing. Yeah. Like you have line and then shadow. Line yeah, exactly. And, shadow. and in draw, my drawing one class, like the professor was like, I could spend an entire semester on line. Just line, no yeah, shadows, ab- absolutely. no shading, and he's yeah. like, and it'd be easy for me. I yeah. can make, <laughs> I can make a line two and a line three. That's class. awesome. And he's like, I could do whole years on color because color is just so complicated. Like you don't think about how if you put blue next to green, how they like bounce off of each other and the light refracts off of each other, and it changes how they look when they're next to each other. Like it literally changes based on how much of one color is next to another color, like how those colors look and interact with each other. Yeah, so it's, it's just like. I think I think things. what we're saying here, in general, is that art is really fucking hard. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want a real shot at it, you have to fucking do it. You have to go all in. Yeah. You can't like, like you, you, you went all in. I went all in. I did. I did. I, I was like, I don't know what this is or how to do it. Uh, but let's do it. And then I went to Japan and. S- fucking studied Japanese for a few months and yeah. brought a ZBrush book with me, shitty laptop, and read the whole thing, folded every other page down, underlined every other paragraph. And yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> came Just back so and much. I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's get to work. Yeah, and like, you know, it's starting to pay off for you a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it will continue to pay off. Like, we, I think we both share the same belief of like, 
As long as you don't give up. As, as long, long as, as you, you don't give up. As long as you keep pushing and keep going, yeah. eventually it will. Yeah, pay don't off. get complacent. Always try to do better. And like don't give up. And then eventually, you know, it's just bound to happen. It has to. And if it doesn't, I'm sorry, because that this has to be the worst feeling. If it doesn't, world. keep going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If it doesn't, keep working on it. If you're like 90 and you're going to die soon, I don't know, maybe like hold off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you're like, 95. Spend some time with your family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe this isn't the most important thing in your life. But like, especially for young artists that are like, I don't know if I could do it. Like, just take the jump. Do it. And if you hate it in a year, fucking give up on it. Like, that's it. It's not meant for you. If you it's something, something you love and start doing it all the time... You're still going to learn from that. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, and the next thing you do, you'll learn so much from that, and you can apply that in any other field. Like, there's a lot to apply to field. Like, art, just critical thinking is, like, the number one skill of an artist. Mm-hmm. How do I solve this problem? Which is exactly what you're trying that, to do. That's I what art... Thing. To go back to our original... We could, we could maybe wrap up with this. Like, yeah. <laughs> maybe we have found out art... Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I've meditated enough on this, aka bloviated. <laughs> yeah. Art is what what is art, Daryl? What have we decided that art is? Oh, I just have such problems with that. I don't know. I I, I, th- I think I'm still fine with saying that, that anything is art, but But there's a line. Yeah. I think I you say, have your own personal line. I'd say anything could be art. You have the uh, anything could be made into an art form. I mean, building houses, making cars, speakers, computers, phones, all these things. So much time and energy is put into the nice ones. But you can have a shitty house. But, like, what is a beautiful house? Well, it's... Or what is a very expensive house? Always. Almost always. It's beautiful. Yeah. There's no, like, my That house is a work of art. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, like, anything can be art as long as enough time energy and thought were put into the piece. Yeah, and it's an age-old, like, discussion and argument of, like, oh, is it art? But, like, like I said, at the end of the day, I don't really care. It's, it's, all, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's about whether it's, like, do I apply value to that thing? No, I do not apply value to your splatter painting because it's something that I could do without a forethought. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't personally call that good art. But I, 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 don't, I don't really care about calling it art or not. Like, it doesn't affect me in any yeah. way. I think, yeah, some people get offended by it, whether, like, or not you agree with their personal sense of art. But, like, it's such a subjective field, too. It's like, some people think squiggly lines on canvas are worth millions of dollars, and there's plenty of squiggly lines on canvases yeah. which are worth millions and millions of dollars. And some, it's the Statue of David's priceless, you know what I mean? So, like... Right. In the end, it's just... Don't, don't even get me started on the Statue of David, dude. <laughs> it's yeah, amazing. <laughs> it is. It's gorgeous, yeah. Um, that's Rodin, isn't it? Uh, the Statue of David, I believe, is Michelangelo. It's, it is Michelangelo, sorry. You know he made that when he was 23? Really? Or 24? I don't... I did not, but he. I think he spent a fucking shit ton of time on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably... Yeah, that whole 23 or 24. Is it the Sistine Chapel that has the ceiling painted? That's Michelangelo, yeah. Yeah, that's Michelangelo as well. Uh, he spent, like... So many years on that, if I remember correctly, to the point where they were like, just get it done! <laughs> and uh, he had, like, a bunch of people working on it with him, like, under underlings or, or his students, I guess is what you would call them. Mm-hmm. And by the end of it, he had, like, so much nudity in it that they ended up covering up a bunch of it. Those over, assholes. Over top of his art. Yeah. How politics and society yeah. can, like, change. You're holding back my art! Yeah. My shit in a box art! <laughs> Ro- Rodin actually made a, The Thinker. That's what I'm thinking of. Which is... Not compared. Well, I mean, also, also, n- well, I also th- one of the greats. Where, where is the statue of David? Do you I have know? no idea. I know no it's right. in like the the little rounded cathedral room. Yeah, but off the top of my head, I don't know. So we'll probably Louvre? just cut this so we don't sound very, very stupid. Yeah, very <laughs> ignorant. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. And yeah, I don't actually talk a lot about art with people, so. Yeah, neither do I. So yeah. Like, so it's like you don't have a chance to, bloviate. Yeah. Like I said. <laughs> what, what, bloviate? Yeah. That's what? my big word of the day, dude. What does that mean? I don't it just know. means talk at length without <laughs> saying anything. Always. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, yeah. we're, we're just like to, keeping... to, to some point. You want you want a thing of water or anything, dude? You thirsty? Yeah, I'll take some water. Or I have some cookie cola. Oh, yeah. Cool. I, don't, I don't drink it. Yeah, well, I drink it on occasion with my rum and coke. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>